So for breakfast today is the, the usual uh, bacon and eggs. I think that's like what we've had every single breakfast over here in the past few years. So I'm sure you're tired of seeing it, but we don't get tired of eating it. So we're going to keep on doing it, <laughs> even if it bores the heck out of you. It can be very difficult to plan a day of hunting in Africa, sometimes things just happen and although we all expected to get straight down to business with the ground squirrels, plans changed when the farmer asked us to head up a mountain pass and help him cull a blessbuck ram. Claudio had never shot a blessbuck before so I handed him my 260 Remington and after a fairly long drive up the mountains we decided to head out on foot. Finding the herd of blessbuck was not that difficult, we located them easily enough but they were already extremely wild having been culled quite a bit in the drought and as hard as we tried we just couldn't quite close the gap to where we wanted it. We played cat and mouse for a while but eventually had to abort as I could see that the shots we were presented with were going to be a little bit too risky in the swirling winds. It's one thing taking risky shots when shooting small varmints but when hunting game there shouldn't be any chances taken and so we eventually head back to the truck. So it was a, an interesting start to the day. Um, we were planning to go shoot some ground squirrels, but as things often happen here, um, I said it can be quite opportunistic. And we went to the farmhouse to just say hello to the farmer, and we were asked to actually go out and and help to shoot a, a blessed buck as part of a management hunt. Obviously, animals on uh, farms like this need to be managed, especially during times of drought, to make sure that their numbers don't get too small or too big, or they don't overgraze an area. So we went out to, to try to get a blessed buck for Claudio, but unfortunately they, they wouldn't let us get within about 600 meters and with the wind in the mountains and through the valleys, I just wasn't comfortable letting Claudio take a shot like that, especially as it's one of his first shots with, with my rifle. It's very tricky in the wind when you, you can't measure downrange, you can only measure at your point because the wind is always different downrange. So anyway, canceled those plans, came back to the, the camp here, had some lunch, some simple two minute noodles and, and um, coffee. We're gonna finish up our coffee and then uh, head back into the truck and, and drive out to the lands so we can uh, look for some ground squirrels. I'm not really sure if they'll be there because it is very dry and they haven't irrigated there by the looks of things, which means they might have actually just run out of stuff to, to graze on and, and would have actually died, but we'll, we'll see. If we don't find ground squirrels, we'll move on to the other lands and look for baboons and monkeys because there are often some out there so I'm still optimistic um, it looks like we've seen a lot of uh, movement here even if it's just monkeys we're gonna have a good time so let's sit out and do that The good news is that there are ground squirrels here and I put this one down nicely with a shot through the heart and lungs with the 26 grain slug at my impact. The bad news is that once again I forgot to hit record so it's another, it's another shot that we've, we've missed on camera unfortunately but um, yeah what we'll do is we'll just keep moving. It's really good to know that the ground squirrels are out and we've had, we have seen a few of them out here so far so between Claudio and myself I'm sure we'll get a few down. I think we just need to be more vigilant with the with the camera and make sure that we actually get the shots on camera and rem remember to hit record. But let's take a drive around. Let's let's look around here. I've seen a lot of ground squirrel holes, so I'm sure we'll get some more, and I'm sure it'll be good. Let's go do it. Perfect. So I remembered to hit record this time, which is great. <laughs> and I uh, actually had the time to range him at 50 meters, um, 51 meters to be exact, get the parallax dialed in nicely, and ended up being perfect headshot. Um, right behind the eye in the one end and out the back the other end. So 
perfect, really happy with that. He's right here by his hole, so he never went anywhere. And um, we're gonna keep going and we're gonna try um, get Claudio a few ground scrolls now as well. He's got his Huban and I'm very excited to see how the Huban performs. He's got a lot of power, 80 foot pounds, so it's gonna hit them really hard. But let's get back in the track, let's drive around and let's try to find a new colony because it looks like this colony scampered down their holes. Um, but I'm really glad to see the R around despite the fact that, that it's dry here. I mean, literally there's no, there's no lucerne growing here. They probably haven't been able to irrigate here because of the drought, but um, yeah, good to see that the squirrels are still out. I know you guys have been asking for a hunting video with the Huban K1 for a long time. I've had a fair share of issues with the gun over the past couple years, but it's working really well now and it's perfect for this kind of hunting. With a 33 grain 2.2 slug traveling at about 1000 feet per second, it's all too easy. Mi primera ardilla in Africa. Headshot. Perfect, perfect headshot. Look at that. Impresionante. Con el Juven K1, 80 foot pound. Impresionante. Muy, muy, muy preciso. Muy feliz. <laughs> if I compare this to last year, last year I struggled in the wind. I made a whole video talking about how difficult it was to hunt in the wind with a 22 caliber air, uh, pellet gun. But we're shooting slugs now. We've got an 80 foot pound Huban shooting uh, 33 grain slugs at like a thousand feet per second. And we've got my impact shooting uh, 26 grain slugs at um, 950 feet per second cutting through the wind perfectly and um, doing the job uh, um, in the wind without any wind hold even at distances past 50 meters they're doing a fantastic job and that's what you want so it's a thumbs up for all the equipment i mean claudio shooting a monkey at what 400 meters that's insane um so we're just going to go about our business it's overcast now but you know we're probably going to call it today soon head back to the camp settle down and tomorrow i think we're going to focus on the dassies but um, we'll get to tomorrow tomorrow we'll leave that for uh, you know we'll discuss that on another episode but let's get back to the house let's relax a bit and we might even get some monkeys on the way home let's go we thought it would end there but on our way back through the lands we see a fair amount of ground squirrel activity and to make things a little bit easier for ourselves we bring out the trusty old 22 250. these shots were all filmed in slow motion but they're a little bit too graphic for public youtube so if you do want to check them out, I'll put a link down below to my Patreon account where you'll have access to the extended uncensored versions. So that shot was from about 79 meters, that's what I ranged it at. I dialed for it, I held about a mil for the wind and spot on. I don't know if it was a perfect headshot, so I'm not sure if we're gonna actually be able to recover him from the hole. Sometimes if you don't get a perfect headshot, they kind of scurry down their holes before they die and you're not able to reach them. But I'm just overjoyed with the fact that I'm able to take a shot, first shot in the wind and actually hit something. I could tell you straight now, if this was last year when we were using pellets, I would not be able to take a shot like that. I would have to take one or two shots to actually just understand what the wind's doing to the pellet and then I'd have to hold accordingly. But because there's a lot less wind drift with a slug, you're able to kind of estimate and be close enough to be spot on. So I'm really, really happy. Ese, mi segundo headshot, eh, la segunda ardilla con el Juven K1, impresionante, apenas se veía, muy, muy preciso, 80 foot pound, mucho, mucho power, hay un viento como en la Patagonia, mucho viento, pero un tiro perfecto. With the ground squirrel vomiting done and dusted, we were expecting to start winding down for the day, but as we arrived back to the camp, we spot a troop of baboons more than half a kilometer away, and I began to set up for a shot. 
Baboons are the ultimate pests for farmers in South Africa, especially on sheep farms like Wittmoskloof where they kill the newborn lambs, and so we take every opportunity we can to shoot them. Unfortunately, the bullet doesn't make contact and the scope cam footage reveals the shot passing just off to the left. I don't spot my error, so when I get the opportunity for another shot, I make the same mistake once again and it's 0 for 2. As I said earlier, you can measure the wind at your firing position, but it takes real experience to know what it's doing on the other side of the valley and more often than not, you come off second best. Alright, so we're back at the camp. It's been a long day, but it's about, I'm guessing about 7 p.m. now. It's just starting to get dark. I've been collecting some firewood over the past five minutes or so. Should be enough to get a good fire started. Oh, when there drops a piece of my foot. <laughs> Should be enough to get a good fire started and um, we'll get the meat on shortly, hopefully before it gets dark so we can see what we're doing. And then it's dinner and probably going straight to bed. I've got a bit of a headache. I don't know just be if it's because I've just been having so much fun today <laughs> or whether I've just been in the sun a bit long or something like that. Maybe I'm dehydrated. Maybe a combination of all three of those things, but good meat, I think we'll, we'll sort that out. And some good sleep will also be very beneficial to my body. So yeah, let's get that started, shall we? And there you go, the fire's burning. It looks like a bit of a mess, but who cares? It's a fire and it's gonna get the job done, keeping us warm and cooking the meat. That's all that matters. <laughs> Thank you. 